You know, I've been carrying this laptop bag around for a couple years, but what's really in it in 2023? And we'll start by talking about the bag. Why I say that with finger quotes is I've already taken everything out of it. Um, I just forgot to talk about the bag. So, yeah. This is a Swiss Army 16-inch laptop bag. It was, I think, either $60 or $80. <laughs> so pretty expensive, but it's very durable. And I've had this for quite a few years. It's been all over, and it works really well. Um, I've had it since 2020, actually. And what you do is you can put this on a suitcase, which I did when we were traveling, which works really well, because um, you, you only have to pull your suitcase. So you put this through the thing, um, and then this stays on your suitcase. Um, it has a lot of pockets, so it has this front pocket with all of these compartments in it. Then it has a middle pocket, and then a top pocket with a laptop sleeve, um, which we'll show you. And I'll talk about this. All right, so keep in mind, not everything is in my bag all the time. Um, like for example, the chargers, which you'll see most of the time those are those just stay plugged in. Let's get started with the main pouch. And here we have my headphones. They're white Sony headphones. I don't know the model. Um, I'll try and link it in the description. I'll try and link everything in the description. Um, but all I know about these is that they're like $30 headphones. They're not expensive at all, um, but they work extremely well. They sound really good. They have a decent inline microphone with pause play and like skipping tracks. And then they can fold up nice and compact. And they also have an expandable headband. So I really like these. I've had these for over a year now. I got them for Christmas in 2021. So December, 2021 and they've not failed, they work really well. Next, let's pull out some cables I have. Oh, they kind of, they do kind of get jumbled. Um, I might get cable ties, but we have the a long USB-C cable. This is for my MacBook and iPad. Um, it came with my MacBook. Then we have a braided cable it's USB-C to lightning um, I use it for my iPhone but it actually came with my magic mouse which you'll see um, we have this which is my Apple watch charger it's silver which means it's a fast charger uh, for my Apple watch series 8 then we have the brick this is for my iPad um, but I use this brick for my Apple watch because I don't use the USB-C cable for my iPad um, cause I just used the MacBook one. Then we have the USB-C cable for my iPad. It's pretty small. Um, I keep this in there in case I need it because most of the time my, uh, MacBook USB-C cable, which here's the brick for that, um, stays in my living room so that like when I'm watching TV or something, I can plug in my MacBook or iPad, um, and I have a backup cable. Then I have this Anker, um, Nano. It's a nine volt, 20 watt charger, um, which I use. I got this because it's small and at the time it didn't have any other USB-C bricks, which I use for this. This is the MagSafe charger for my phone. Um, it's a stand and it's in this uh, stand that's made by Creed Dream, Creed Dream. It's just the MagSafe charger that sits in here, this stand was like $15 and it matches the color of the charger. So that was everything that was sitting in the main part, now let's go into the pouches. So first we have this little pocket on the front, which has a lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter, which I use with my headphones for my iPhone. Then we have a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter, which I use for my iPad. Um, this one's white, because this is an official Apple one, I don't use it very often, um, and it's not broken versus this black one is actually uh, an Amazon Basics brand because it was the same price as the Apple one, but the Apple one seems to break every three months, um, which is very expensive. So after we've gone through a lot of those, I just was like, I'll try a different brand and see if that works. And so far it's not broken. I've had it for a few months. Then we have this pocket here, which in it we have my Magic Mouse I bought with my MacBook. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, it's the white one because I, First of all, I like the white and the silver, not to mention it's cheaper than <laughs> the black. Um, it's a Magic Mouse 2, it has charging. 
It works well. I don't use it very often. Most of the time with my MacBook, I just use the trackpad. And no, I do not care about the lightning port on the bottom because I use it rarely. I rarely have to charge it. So when I do, I don't care about it being on the bottom. Also in that pouch, we have this, which is my Apple Pencil second generation. Third Apple Pencil, um, which you can also see. Oh, well, I did an unboxing of this Magic Mouse, which I'll link. Um, and then for the Apple Pencil, I did an unboxing of this when I did the unboxing for my iPad. And this is my third Apple Pencil. My first one that I got from Best Buy, they ended up giving me an open box one instead of a sealed new one, so I exchanged that. Then they gave me, uh, or then the second one was having like tilt issue and pressure sensitivity issues, and then the third one worked fine. Um, although I did drop this a couple months ago, and it ended up landing on hardwood, uh, tip down, and it dented the tip, so I bought um, replacement tips, and I've not had any problems. And then this pocket, we have this, which is a Pergo um, USB-C dongle for my laptop, for my MacBook, so this plugs into the side, and on the top it has HDMI, two USB-C ports, two USB-3A ports, micro SD, and a full-size SD card. I really like this because it just slides on the side, um, and it matches up with my computer, and it works really well. I've had this for a year and a half now. Uh, and I use it pretty consistently. I've never had a problem with it. It works really well. Um, again, I'll link this in the description. And it wasn't that expensive. That was like 20 bucks or something. And then we have this little pocket with Velcro. And in that, I have two things. One is a USB-C to USB-A adapter. This actually came with my mom's Samsung Galaxy Note 9. It came in the box so that you can plug your old phone into it um, and transfer all the data, which is interesting. <laughs> um, but I kept this because I use it occasionally for my MacBook. If I just need one USB-A, I might just plug this in, as well as for my iPad, because the other one won't fit. I'll plug this in and it works if I need. I don't know. It's very rare that I need to connect to USB to my iPad, but if I need it, it works, as well as I was using this for my 3D printer, because the only port that that has is USB-C, then I'll plug a USB-A flash drive into here. Speaking of flash drive, I also got this from work. It's a Lightning to USB-A flash drive. It's like a SanDisk 256 gigabyte, and you plug this into your phone, as and you can transfer whatever data you want to it, as well as you can just like create a backup of your phone and just like plug it in once a day, and it will automatically back it up, and then you can plug it into your computer to access those files, as well as uh, use it as a normal flash drive. It's kind of expensive, but it works really well, and I like it. Then we have another pouch right here, which I don't put anything in, but you could put, I don't know, whatever you want. It's just a very padded pocket in the middle of it. Um, sometimes I will put clothing in here if I'm just like going to a sleepover and I just need like the next clothing for the next day, I'll put it in there. Um, and then we have the main pocket or back pocket, I don't know. <laughs> so it has a divider as well as a sleeve. We'll talk about that in a second. So the divider, I don't have anything on this side. So on this side, I have a rocket book. I really like the concept of a rocket book. Um, cause what it is, it's an erasable, reusable notebook that then has these little, uh, QR codes on them. So you can scan it into your phone. Um, it's like when you write notes, you can scan it into the app and then you have those as a PDF that you can use forever. I don't use it very often, but it's really nice. Um, I have used it in the past and if I do need to use this to, uh, take notes and I'm not allowed to use like an iPad or something, I'll definitely use this. Um, and it's reusable, so you write with a pen, and then you just wash it with a washcloth. Um, also, in that pocket, I have this, which is a screen protector in this little sleeve. For um, It's a matte screen protector, so like a paper-like screen protector. It's not paper-like brand, It's a, so it's called a paper type. I'll also link this in the description. It has magnets, so it magnetically sticks on your iPad, so you can use um, the screen protector and then you can take it off when you're not drawing because when you have this on the screen the screen doesn't look the best um, as well as it's a weird texture if you're just trying to use the iPad uh, versus when you're drawing it can be kind of slippery using the Apple Pencil versus this makes it feel like paper or at least more like paper I very rarely use this I've just gotten used to the iPad because I don't always carry this around with me when I have my iPad, but it's still nice to have, um, especially like when you're sketching, like for art class, I do that on my iPad and I use this for that. And then 
the last thing I have in the main pocket is this. Um, this was actually my mom's and she gave it to me uh, for my birthday. And what it is, is it's a little metal stand that can expand like this so you can get the width you need it. And then in the, you lift it up and it has these pegs that come out that lock into place. Let's just an example. And then it's meant for a laptop. So like you put the keyboard up so you can have a more ergonomic typing angle or something. My mom was using it because her laptop sitting on her desk was too low. It wasn't uh, for doing zooms. It wasn't at the right height. So she was using it for that, but she just really didn't use it. So she gave it to me. Um, so you can put a laptop on it or you can put, I use it for my iPad for drawing as an easel. Um, and it works really well for that. Again, I don't use it all the time, but when I do, it works super well. It has non-slip um, feet on it, so it won't slip around on your desk or on your device. Keep in mind this video is not sponsored by anyone. These are just like personal recommendations. Then in the main pouch or the device pouch, I don't know. We have, let's start here, this. This is my iPad Air. Uh, let me clear all the notifications on it. iPad Air, ta-da, fifth generation. Um, you can see my unboxing video for this. Um, that's the same one as the Apple Pencil, so that will be linked. Um, and the case, and it works, let me just talk about the iPad. So it's the iPad Air 5th generation, it has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and another 8 gigabytes of virtual RAM, so 16 gigabytes total. Um, it has, and it has an M1 chip in it, which is the same as my computer. Um, and it works super well. Um, it's basically like an iPad Pro, just w with a little bit thicker bezel. Um, by like 0.3 inches <laughs> and uh, it has it's limited to 60 Hertz instead of 120 Hertz for the screen which could be nice for drawing um, and I have 120 Hertz on my phone but I just don't use it and I don't really notice it um, and then the case it's in is the Logitech combo touch which I have a video coming out so subscribe if you want to see that it's just about like the cases for my iPad and finally finding the right case, which I really like this case. Um, this isn't my final Logitech Folio, this is my second, and I will have three total. You'll see why in that video, so subscribe. But I really like this case. It's pricey at $200 um, new. Again, I'll talk about that in my video. But it's for $200, it's a pretty expensive case, um, but it works so well because it. the case for the iPad itself has the kickstand, which is adjustable. And this is the only case, aside from Apple official ones, that uses the pins on the back of the iPad. It's called the dock connector, but it's really just pogo pins. I'll show a picture of it on the screen. And what you do is you put your iPad in this case, and it has the three pins on the back, which then converts to five pins. Um, they're five pins because it only uses three, but when you flip it around, I'll show you. Um, and then what that does is it then connects to this keyboard case. So now you can use a mouse on your iPad um, or you can use the keyboard as well as it has an adjustable backlight so you can set it at whatever brightness you want You can also just control it from the touch screen which is really cool um, and then it has function keys but what's nice is it's detachable which is a requirement for me having a case for my iPad because I would I don't use the keyboard all the time but I do use it quite a bit so it's nice so I can just have it on my iPad and use it as a basically laptop and then remove it and use this as a tablet and if I don't have a place I can set this if I'm out and I don't want to lose it I can just flip this around stick it on and now it's still it's a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier but it still works really well as an iPad so I love this case I'll talk about it in that video that's videos coming soon so subscribe in a couple weeks my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro I got this pretty much spec'd out um, it's 13 inch M1, M1, uh, 8 core CPU, 8 core GPU, which is the same one in my iPad versus like the MacBook Air, they limit one of the GPU cores. Uh, so it's an 8 core CPU and 7 core GPU. It's the same, uh, exact same chip, they're just artificially limiting it to get you to upgrade. Um, so it's that. It's, uh, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which was the max, a one terabyte hard drive. Um, which is the 
one like not maxed out thing because you can get a two terabyte hard drive if you wanted to but it was like an, another two hundred dollars um so on top of like a two thousand dollar laptop um with an education discount so i was like i'll just stay there on this side it has a headphone jack and on this side it has two usb c's it'd be nice to have more ports but it really just doesn't matter for me because i don't plug that many things into my computer so here's everything in my laptop bag it's quite a few items. Now there are a couple other things I want to talk about that aren't specifically, I guess, laptop bag. Um, it's an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Again, I'll link the video for this. This also works really well. Ignore the case. This is like a fingerprint magnet. It never stays clean. It's silver 512 gigabyte. Um, it has, it's in the Spigen Tough Armor case. And then one other device, which is this. My Apple Watch Series 8. Uh, guess what? I'll link the unboxing video for it. Um, with the sport loop so it's a series 8 cellular um, 45 millimeter and there's one last thing that I want to talk about um, which does go in a bag my camera bag um, let me turn the camera around so it's what I shot this video on the Sony ZV E10 this is another thing I have quite a few videos on that I'll link with the um, e mounts 18 to 135 millimeter lens which also works really well the autofocus on it is pretty good and it has a huge range which is why i got the 18 to 135 stabilization is also really good i really recommend this camera and this lens um i'll again link the links to all these products um as well as the videos about them will be in the description and the thing i use it with which never goes in my camera bag because it's bigger than that but it's this this is the joby i would say 3k gorilla pod and it, again, works really well. I mostly just use it to angle my camera. Um, this is pretty much the tripod I exclusively film on. It has a great swivel head and adjustability. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.